Yay, that button worked. And we'll make sure the last button works. All righty. So as uh, Mr. Perkins has pointed out, the chat feature is disabled. So um, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, but we will be using uh, the Q&A uh, box. So if you have a question, um, feel free to type it in. I'm probably not going to get to it until the end, but I will get to all the questions. Um, and for anybody that was confused about uh, the title of this, uh, as much as I wanted to uh, you know, put out there um, how to kill off your competition uh, without using a gun, um, I had to uh, tone it down just a little bit uh, so that the uh, Facebook and Google gods would allow my um, ads to run. So, um, so if you were confused, so sorry. But you are in the right place for Whistle While We Crush the Competition. I am so looking forward to this. So um, we're going to talk a lot about how I eliminated my competition and became one of the highest or the highest priced cleaner in my area. But most importantly, I'm going to be giving you the strategies and some templates so you can create a similar plan. You do want higher prices, right? So this is going to be nine strategies to make the competition irrelevant, avoid commoditization, and command the highest prices in your industry. Now, this is for you. If you're tired of those tire-kicking, coupon-clipping cheapos, we all know who they are, right? You want to attract, you know, the best ideal clients, the people that you want to do business with. Um, you obviously want to make more money, you know, because when you make more money, you can help more people. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I got into this business ownership entrepreneur game so that I could actually have a life and not be beholden to an employer uh, or, you know, somebody who's going to constantly tell me what to do. So in the next 52 minutes, you're going to get four ways to avoid being seen as a commodity. I'm going to give you five ideas on how to escape being a commodity, if that's how you're viewed now. And then I'm going to show you how elastic price is. And when I talk about price elasticity, I'm talking about how much flexibility you have in prices, not going down, but going up. See, most of the time when we think about price, it's in our own heads where we have the problem of what to charge. You know, a lot of us will look around at the competition and say, all right, everybody's charging 50 bucks. Ooh, I'm going to stretch the price and charge 51. Mm, you go there, sailor, you go. Um, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doubling your prices in some cases. So, I mean, really, imagine. If you could command prices two times, five times, even 10 times your closest competitor and your clients ecstatically, cheerfully, and willingly continue to give you money and don't even think twice about it. Price resistance is eliminated. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree that Disney is not like the dwarf bashful when it comes to taking money from you and extracting it from your wallet. It doesn't happen that way. People are glad to give Disney their money because they know that they're going to have the memories with their family at the end. A great example, uh, you may have heard me tell the, uh, the bouncing ball story, um, but when I had my family in the Animal Kingdom a few years ago, one of the ways that Disney employees, also known as cast members, sell things is that they engage you. Most of the time, they're playing with you. So we're walking down the sidewalk and one of these guys selling trinkets at the kiosk got this big round goofy bouncy ball and he bounces the ball to my daughter who then bounces it back to the guy. And then the guy bounces it to my son and he bounces it back. He bounces it to me. All of a sudden I'm playing bouncy ball with the guy selling the ball. Eventually the ball ends up in my backpack for 79 bucks. The guy is selling giant goofy balls for $79, which by the way, can be purchased at Walmart for a whopping 
So because he's engaged you in play and because the, the way they present their products, Disney can get away with it. Actually, you can't get that bouncy ball at Walmart. It's a uh, uh, just for in the Disney park. So you can get a goofy ball at Walmart, but not this one. So imagine, you know, charging those extra prices. Imagine being the one business in your city or town whose legendary service is raved about like a 10-year-old just returning from Disney. How about if you could generate walk-on burning coals client loyalty? That's that whole putting an iron fence around your clients so that they can't leave and your competitors can't get in. And finally, imagine if you will clients and families who actually look forward to seeing you and are delighted every step of the way and stay with you for a lifetime. Wouldn't we all love lifetime clients? It can be done. So what would all that mean to you? If you had clients who would not leave you, clients who paid you much, 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 much more than you ever got before, what would that mean to you? It would mean, what, more freedom? Maybe time for your family? You can take up that knitting hobby if you really wanted to. Um, more autonomy? Certainly more free time. God, you can enjoy, go to your kids' soccer practice and cook dinner for the family. All the things that I kind of like doing. Or you know what? You could just sit on your arse eating bonbons and drinking beer. I guess whatever floats your boat. But these are the things that it will give you. But if you don't, you're going to be in deep a doo doo. Okay. We all listen to the news and we hear the doom and gloom about the economy. People are pulling back. People are not spending as much. Uh, good news, the gas prices are coming down. So hopefully people's pocketbooks will open up a little bit. But, you know, if you don't put an iron fence around your clients, they are going to leave you. So for those of you that don't know who the heck I am, uh, my name's Vance, um, and I used to work for this guy. This is my former boss, Mickey Mouse. Uh, everybody say hi to Mickey. I spent a decade at Walt Disney World as a senior leader. I started at the Yacht and Beach Club. Here's a picture of it under construction. They had a huge five-acre water park as the pool for the Yacht and Beach Club. Um, I worked aboard the Empress Lily as a service trainer. Anybody know who Lily is? Well, I'll tell you, because I don't want you guessing. That's Walt's wife. Now, I'm sure Lily is not happy that a concrete steamship that doesn't sail anywhere, I'm sure she's real happy that that boat was named after her. Um, great restaurants, but I don't think Lily would be happy. One of Disney's big failures, if you remember Pleasure Island, if you're of a certain age, uh, this was Disney's um, attempt at nighttime entertainment, scantily clad women, and tons and tons and tons of booze. Um, I have the um, uh, distinct pleasure of having 1,067 New Year's Eves under my belt. You see, at Pleasure Island, it was New Year's Eve every night of the week. That was their theme. Ooh, look, first lesson, write it down. You need to be about something. You got to have a theme to your business. I'm not talking scantily clad women and booze, but you got to have a theme. Um, my last job at uh, Disney, I was the food and beverage director for the Contemporary Resort, which is that big hotel that has the monorail going through it. And I was on the design team and I operated a little restaurant called Chef Mickey's. Um, so if you've ever been there and you have go through the celebration and the towels and the napkins are waving through the air, you have me to thank for that. Um, the cool thing about when we built it, though, the systems we put in place were so good, not only operationally, but for the guest experience, that most of them are still in place today. And then, of course, we come to what I do now, about uh, 15 years ago, I did what every little boy growing up desired to do, and I opened up a carpet cleaning business. I know everybody, every boy has dreamed about that. That's been what my son wants to do. No, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. But let me show you what happened between Disney 
and the start of my entrepreneurial journey. All right, so let me just, I'm gonna fill in a real big gap here for you. So here's how it started. So as you know, I'm an entrepreneur just like you. I still own and operate my carpet cleaning business, a mold remediation business, and an oriental rug washing facility. I've owned these businesses that were built from scratch, so I didn't buy anything, all right, since 2007. Now, if any of you remember 2007, wasn't such a hot year. I mean, it was when the uh, economy started to implode and 2008 was just as worse or just as bad. Um, you know, I have fought, groveled, uh, slugged it out, looked for clients um, using old methods of coupons and discounts. And all it got me was coupon clipping, discount seeking cheapos. That was not working. So I started out, um, I, I had a job. And, I, and after about five years, I like to say I got laid off, but I got fired. Um, I just, I, it just wasn't for me. Um, so my next job, yeah, I got fired again. So I finally came to the realization that I just make a lousy employee. I don't like being told what to do. At the same time that I was starting the business in 2007, my wife almost died. She had a cerebral aneurysm. You guys know what that means? That means some blood vessel on the inside of her brain exploded, and she was in the neuro ICU for uh, 11 days. Now, I'm out of work. I'm just starting up a business that has zero clients. We were going to live on her salary. She was a regional manager for uh, Starbucks, um, and uh, we were going to live on her salary while I got everything up and running. Well, in September of 2007, I had squat for income. So I became a struggling carpet cleaner. No fun in that. Actually, I don't tell this story often, but I had to actually hide one of our cars from the repo man. That's how bad finances got. Um, you know, I'd gotten the notices that they were, you know, somebody was going to be coming. So I literally for a week parked my car at different places throughout the neighborhood so they couldn't find it. Finally, I got a loan from a buddy and paid it off, but it sucks being poor, I'll tell you. And I'm not proud to say it, but yeah, we had to take food stamps. Now, the great thing about, I'm not going political, don't worry, I'm not going there, I'm not going there. Um, it's great that we have a social safety net, but it's just a safety net. You don't sit in it and suck off the government for the rest of your life. I am ecstatic, you know, I mean, we've all paid into the system. I'm not happy that I had to take out of the system, but I'm glad it was there. And we didn't have to stay there for too long, like six or seven months or so. Um, so, oh yeah, and then of course, um, you know, bankruptcy didn't help any. So at this point you're thinking, why in the hell am I listening to this guy if he's a struggling carpet cleaner who had to hide from the repo man uh, on food stamps and he was bankrupt? Well, I ain't that today, okay? Um, I've made it and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. On the screen in front of you are four of my big reasons. There's Camden, Emma, Kazis, and Tanner, my four kids. Tanner's my oldest, he's now 22. Emma, oh God. For any of you that have a daughter, oh, that are a teenager, oh, I feel for you, man. It ain't, it ain't easy, but she's wonderful, um, absolutely beautiful. So I was. I've cleaned my share of rundown houses and questionable neighborhoods, and you know while they deserve clean carpet, I did not want to be the one cleaning it. These folks were not going to make me rich. Now don't get me wrong; I was managing to start making a meager living but I felt like an employee in my business, not a true owner. And I certainly was not getting rich. I needed to change something. So to break out of this rut and to make the business work, because I was at the point of, I either had to make the business work or shut it down <laughs> or get a job. Yuck, I hate that word. Um, so I started to research and study marketing, advertising, business, and I studied some more. And that led me to a guy named Joe Polish. Uh, some of you might know him. Uh, he was really big in the carpet space uh, 10 or 15 years ago as a coach. Um, I got the opportunity to share the stage with him a couple of times. Um, but Joe 
as great as he was at talking about marketing for carpet cleaners, kept talking about this guy, Dan Kennedy. So I was like, well, Joe, if you're going to keep talking about him, I'm going to skip you and I'm going to go right to the source. So I researched and studied more. Book after book, course after course, I devoured them all. But the key thing about getting all that stuff was that I implemented. Keyword number two, this is the second thing you should be writing down. If you're going to buy stuff, you know, courses and books, well, you better do something with all of that knowledge that you just got. Um, and it led me to my first price increase. You know, one day I was driving my carpet cleaning van home when I was still on the truck. And I said to myself, self, you spent 10 years as a manager at the Walt Disney Company. Not only do you have a huge service and experience background, but you've got gobs of knowledge about guests and clients. And, and you also now have the marketing skills that you got from Joe and Dan. You could sell at some of the highest prices in the world. And I thought back to the Disney prices. I mean, where in the world can you buy that rubber ball for 79 bucks that you could get Walmart for 499? And you know what? Most people are happy paying that price. Heck, that rubber ball might be the cheapest thing you get while you're there. Anyway, back to my thought in my truck. Self, you should be getting Disney level prices. So that day I went home and I immediately raised my prices 10%. Did not change anything else, just raise my prices. You know what? Never heard a peep. Never heard a peep from any of my clients and my prospects. They were all happily paying because I was already delivering Disney style service and a huge value. That was back in 2010. I said, you know, thinking to myself again, self, if my clients and prospects are paying these prices, I'll bet they pay even more for increased service and value. And gosh darn it, if they didn't. So I could really end the webinar here, tell you all to go out and raise your prices 10%, and bam, you would have gotten more value out of this than anything else. Well, you didn't pay anything to be here. Uh, so I can't really say you got 10x the value, but you know what? Go out and raise your prices 10% and see what the hell happens. I'll show you later on, ooh, this is cool. If you stick around uh, towards the end of the presentation, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna prove to you mathematically how you can raise prices and lose uh, customers and still make a profit. So after all of these realizations driving my truck around, I realized, oh my crap, this is working. Other cleaners and people in the industry started asking me how I did it. So. That started my next business of coaching and consulting other home service businesses on how to create experiences for their clients and most importantly, how to charge appropriately so that you make money. Heck, I even won an award. It was a major award. Actually, that's not the major award. This is the guy. So back in 2015, I'm going to toot my own horn here. And I was the uh, winner of the marketer of the year for Dan Kennedy and GKIC. And I actually was the longest reigning mark of the year ever. I was the reigning marketer of the year three years in a row. Um, so I know a little something about marketing. You're probably asking yourself, why the hell are you doing this? You know? Why do you do what you do, Vance? Well, honestly, I hate to see anybody struggle, especially when a readily available solution is presenting itself. I also love to see the look on my members' faces, my clients' faces when they succeed. It's so cool. Their eyes just go bonkers and they're like making money. I mean, I've been well off and then broke and poor and then wealthy again. Trust me, I much prefer wealthy. And here is a key point for all of you. The more money you make, the more people you can help. That's a writer downer. So in the remaining 48 minutes, we're gonna talk about four ways to avoid becoming the commodity, five ideas on how to escape being a commodity, and then we're gonna talk about prices. So what if you could completely eliminate your competition from your customer's consideration? Would you do it? Of course you would. These days, so many companies strive to fit into a niche that they got to 
elbow their way past a mass of competitors to do it. Why strive to be a leader in your category when you can create a different category and be the only one in it? I'm going to show you some examples. You know, people always complain. It's one of the, when I work with my private clients, one of their first complaints is that their product, their service is not unique. It has no distinctiveness or it's an ordinary commodity and has zero price elasticity. Oh, the pain of being ordinary, plain and mundane. It's almost as hiring as hearing, but my business is different. So the big question that you, your clients are asking is why should I do business with you? Most companies answer this question and you know, most companies answer that most competitive question in a most non-competitive way. They tell the customer, you know, do business with us because we're pretty much the same as our competition, but we're good at it. That is not differentiation. They look at your business, your competitor's business or some unrelated business, and they believe they can get the same thing just as good for a similar or lower price from your competitors. And they're exactly right. Businesses are forced to compete as commodities until they do something to change the customer's perception of what they do. So real quickly, what is a commodity? It's something that's ordinary, common, or mundane. Think about iron ore, flour, attorneys, physical therapists, carpet cleaners. There's no differentiation. There's nothing that separates a dentist from a dentist from a dentist an electrician from an electrician from an electrician. They all just kind of blend into the background. Back in the days of the Yellow Pages, you could open up any home service business in the Yellow Pages, carpet cleaners, pest control, water treatment, you name it, open up the Yellow Pages and every single ad had a picture of their truck. Well, what the hell good does that do? A picture of the van. We certainly hope you have a van, because how the hell else are you going to get to my house to do the service? Everybody was doing what we call marketing incest, just copying everybody else. Commodities are perceived as low value. I mean, just think about flour and sugar. Cheap, cheap. As a commodity, there's no real reason to pay more for it because you haven't differentiated. And it is the fastest path to profit erosion. So what is a category of one? Well, you cannot be compared to another brand. The great challenge for many businesses today is to eliminate being seen as a commodity. Differentiate yourself. And you got to do it differentiating from your competitors to avoid being compelled to compete in a low margin price war. It's just a race to the bottom when you lower your prices because you're never going to get to the bottom. There is no competitive advantage to being second lowest price. You might as well go up right? And let's be the highest price because you can work with that. In other words, you want to force an apples to oranges comparison between your business and the competition. And I'm going to show you a document towards the end of exactly how I do that in a carpet cleaning business. And you're going to hear me say this a bunch of times. If a carpet cleaner can do it, anybody can do it. All right. So uh, to avoid being in that commodity trap, You've got to find points of genuine differentiation, mostly by looking in places that you've previously neg neglected and going beyond the expected factors of price, quality, and service. The key here is values, all right? Customers are looking for a way to solve their problems. You need to offer more than simply a good price to keep customers happy. So let's think about Disney real quick. Disney can't be compared to anybody. This is a picture of one of their merchandise shops. If you look at it, you will not see M&Ms, Kit Kat bars, or gummy bears. Everything here is branded to Disney. Sure, you can get goofy gummies, but you can't get gummy bears. And if you think about it, last time you went to the gas station or the grocery store and you bought a little four ounce pack of gummy bears, it probably cost you a buck or two. Not goofy gummies. Goofy gummies are $8.95 for a little four ounce pack. Price probably gone up since then. So how does Disney do it? 
because they are selling in a competitive vacuum and they are showing that the only choice they have is between me, me, and me. There is nothing on that wall that is not Disney. Disney delivers the experience. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll remember the scene in movie, uh, in the first movie, which is actually movie number four, uh, where Luke drinks the blue milk, okay? And there's a picture of uh, old man Luke drinking it um, when uh, Galaxy's Edge and uh, studios opened up. This goes back to the theming thing. You can't get Star Wars blue milk anywhere else in the world. Actually, you can't get it anywhere else in the galaxy. Disney's looking for the total experience because people don't buy products anymore. They buy an experience. And the whole experience of doing business with a company is much more than simply the product you buy. It's about the experience the buyer has as the owner of the product, as the owner or recipient of the service. You got to change the weight you give to the importance of your customer's total experience with you. By the way, look at those prices. $7.95 for the glass of blue goo, which I believe is only six ounces. You can get it alcoholic if you want, but that's like $10 more. So you want to avoid um, C or C thinking. All right. So look up the word customer and look up the word client. Don't do it right now. I'm doing it for you. So please don't go Google it. Customer is defined as someone who buys a commodity or service. Geez, do we want customers? A client, though, is defined as someone who is under the care and the protection of another. Ooh, I want a client. You want to move the whole relationship that you have with your customers to where they are your client someone you see as under your care and protection. How about relocating? How can you take what you're already serving or selling and sell it somewhere else? Repurpose is another way to avoid being a commodity. How can you take what you're already doing or selling and repurpose it into a different category or a different niche? How about reimagining? How can you take your existing product or service and present it in such a way that the world will take notice? I'm going to show you. So here's our first example. Number one in relocating. This is an ordinary product, bacon, that's been moved from the grocery store shelves to a gift box and a website. Yes, they have Oscar Mayer gift boxes. Woe is you in the pain of being ordinary, plain and mundane, right? This was on at least two or three different websites that I saw uh, where you can get this father. It was a Father's Day promotion. And it was a $25 gift box of bacon. This was an ordinary brand, not some exotic bacon made from some prize bread pigs in distant Tunisia raised only on protein rich seaweed. Nope, Oscar Mayer. And they just were able to sell this gift box. I mean, just they sell it by the thousands, by the boatloads. And this is an a, a, a example of flipping an ordinary commodity, bacon, into a different, more interesting and valuable product as a gift item. Now, think about it. Christmas is coming up. All right, so Christmas holiday, you know, this, this season begins really soon, if it's not already there. You might want to start figuring out who will buy your stuff or services as gifts for others, how to package it, and how to promote it. What we need more of is kind of what I call directed creative thinking and imagination. Directed means not random, not wild, or unbridled like meandering around lost in a forest. It means imagination applied in a focused way to a product service or a proposition. And I'm gonna show you some checklists for this. Think about the ant farm. Oh baby, this used to be just in school supply catalogs. All right, but Joe Kosman, who uh, was the inventor of the ant farm, moved it from being a school supply teaching aid and moved it into toy stores 
for families' home use. Sales <clears throat> took off. A little bit more of a uh, recent example. A lot of you will have seen these ads for those space age space heaters. Um, ben Suarez made a fortune taking the space heater out of Home Depot, out of Lowe's, out of Target, and putting it into full page newspaper ads and direct mail, and then slapped an Amish made or Amish sounding, I don't know, there's really Amish guys doing it, but they got Amish guys in the picture. So they put an Amish made wood cabinet around it, jacked up the price 4X over something that you can get at Lowe's, Walmart, or Target. Now, what could be a bigger commodity than underwear? All right, so uh, this is the research I do for you. I want you to remember this now. I am out there for your benefit researching. When I last checked, Hanes underwear, 16 bucks for nine pair. Comes to about a buck 77 each. Trust me on the math. On the right though, is Duluth trading underwear. Duluth trading for one pair of underwear, $24.99 for one pair. Somebody do the math. Is that, that's like 10 times, right? 10 times? Yeah. More than 10 times the price. So if you thought I was exaggerating with 10xing your price, here's a great example. But how does Duluth differentiate themselves from the commodity of Hanes underwear. Let's take a look real quick. Now that's a commercial. But you're probably thinking to yourself, I'm not Duluth. I can't do a commercial like that. Fine. Let's think of another way that you can differentiate. I often tell the story about creating an experience out of the mundane. And when I was uh, talking with one of my clients, an insurance uh, guy, um, you know, most of the people, when they answer the phone, they say, you know, thank you for calling Dave's Allstate. Well, geez, that's boring. It's mundane. And it sounds like every other Allstate or insurance dealer out there. But my friend here, our client, I should say, um, was a rock and roll fanatic. He had gold records on the walls in his office, guitars, Led Zeppelin, uh, Jimi Hendrix posters, you name it, rock and roll fanatic. He even played in a band. So after some work with him, we came up with a way to really create an experience out of answering the phone. So instead of, you know, thank you for calling Dave's Allstate, how can I help you? And now the entire team answers the phone, thank you for calling Dave's Allstate, the agency that rocks. Now that in and of itself is an experience, okay? It's doing what marketing is designed to do. Attract the people you wanna do business with and repel the people you don't want. Answering the phone that way immediately does that. What about baby wipes? Let's talk about repurposing. Talk about a commodity, okay? It's $1.09 a package at Walmart or per wipe, 1.7 cents. But let's talk about repurposing wipes. <laughs> if you haven't had a butt wipe, ooh, better than a bidet. Introducing dude wipes, $16.99, for 48 or 35 cents each. Same damn wipe, 
just repurposed and repositioned as a dude wipe. By the way, if you're doing the math, that is a 1,958% increase. And if you'd thought that that was not enough, dude wipes then went into their whole dude line. You know, one day, you know, the, the, the inventors of dude wipes, and they're really not inventors, all they are is packagers and marketers, um, you know, they had this epiphany. They were like, they started using baby wipes instead of toilet paper, and their lives were changed forever. But there was one problem. There were no wipes for on-the-go deucing situations. Sensing a toilet bowl-sized hole in the market, they founded dude wipes. Now, even Amazon sells dude wipes, and they even have one of those Amazon dash buttons. All you got to do is push a button and more butt wipes show up. What could be more convenient? So can you see how, what, how you can repurpose an existing product and turn it into something else with little to no change? Let's say you own a restaurant. You know, how can I apply your marketing strategies to a B2B business that offers commodity products in a very competitive environment? You know, I don't have a very productive answer for a poor-minded question. Essentially, you've constructed a very small box and locked yourself into it. And joining you in there does not interest me. The better question is, how do you escape? How do you get out of this box? First, you got to agree not to be a commodity. Then you've got to offer something special, extraordinary, fun, with a great story attached. So let's talk about maybe uh, they serve meatballs at this restaurant. Fine, they're a commodity. But let's sell and deliver Italy coming to the business if it's catering, or sell something promotable if selling it through retailers, like little frozen meatballs for, you know, 50 bucks for a dozen. You can create a category of one by doing this. Throw in some promotions with it, win a trip to Rome contest. Uh, bundled goods and bundled services. Um, so there's no meatball to meatball comparison. All right. Where else can you provide this? What about place strategy? Okay. You, you've probably read about, um, you know, some of, some of my clients um, and some of Kennedy's clients, you know, they'll set up a jewelry store at horse race auctions. Why do they do that? One, if you've ever bought a horse, it ain't cheap. They're in the millions. And usually when you come home with a horse, the wife is not happy. So if you get her a little diamond tennis bracelet and show them and dangle that in front of their face and try and walk the horse back to the barn without them seeing, you've got a much better chance of not being made to sleep with the horse, okay? Omaha Steaks, Allen Brothers, they, all these people set up in different places. Five ideas on how to escape being a commodity. And we're going to get into some nitty gritty stuff in just a second. Don't agree. I just said that. It bears repeating. Be and offer something special, extraordinary, and with a great story attached. Create a category of one. Make it so that there is no apples to apples comparison. Radically different pricing. Maybe turnkey stuff, contest, bundles. Great way to do it. Um, think place strategy. Where can you set up where nobody else is? We've had luxury mattress um, sellers set up at, at classic car auctions. Okay. I actually used to advertise my cleaning services. Cover your ears. This is still PG, but I advertise on porn sites. Yes, porn. One, they're very cheap ads. Two, I focused on a specific cleaning so that I would guarantee the phone to ring. And that was cleaning of mattresses. Okay, if you're all done giggling now, this was true. Advertising on porn sites is like a tenth of a percent. I mean, just so much less than Google or Facebook. Anyway, maybe turn your item into a gift. I really went off the rails there, didn't I? Uh, really. <laughs> Turn your item into a gift. One thing I might suggest, take a day off or an afternoon. 
and watch Home Shopping Network or one of those things and watch how stuff is sold. These people are masters at turning commodities into experiences. Blenders. Oh my God, can these people sell blenders? So if a carpet cleaner can do it, if I can successfully sell crap that nobody else wants, you guys can do it. So here's the first thing. I actually came up with a chart, um, and this is a document that I will give to my clients. And I make the comparison impossible or at least very difficult, okay? And I guarantee you, your competitors are too lazy to copy you. So what you have here is a document that's got, I don't know, about a dozen questions on it that my company can all answer positively. Do you use subcontractors? No, we are all, uh, you know, we, we only have our employees. What do you do with the wastewater at the end of the day? Well, we truck it away and dispose of it in a sanitary facility. And we give them all of our answers, which every one of them is a positive yes answer. And we say, look, you wanna shop us around? Go ahead. Here's 10 questions you should ask any carpet cleaner before you let them into your home. Here's a column for competitor A and a column for cleaner B. Go out and ask the questions. Nobody to this day, I've been doing this for 10 years, nobody has come even close to getting more than half of these um, that I have. See, this is easy. Carpet cleaner can do it. How about bundling or creating a continuity program? Okay, got an always clean club where it's a five year program. Could you imagine locking your clients in for five years? Wouldn't that be great? You don't have to worry about marketing to them anymore, which, by the way, the most expensive thing you can do is acquire a new client. It ain't cheap. Keeping them is cheap. So you can come up with a, a continuity plan for your members or for your clients. The big one, I talk about this all the time, but uh, guys, this little box, okay, has generated in excess of $650,000 over the last seven years. I track it. You see, this little box here, it's all a gift box, okay? Why is it a gift box? Because we give it as a gift to the client. Inside this box is a little bottle of spot remover, a bag of cookies, and a little note from me saying, thanks very much for allowing us into your home. Here's a gift. I mean, think about it. If you go to somebody's house for uh, dinner, you get invited to a party, I mean, you're going to bring a bottle of wine, hors d'oeuvres, appetizer, or something. So we're going to someone's house. We don't arrive empty-handed. Everybody is blown away by this. It is actually one of the most, talk even the cleaning's not talked about. People just talk about the damn gift. It cost me $4.85. And every year, this investment brings in over $65,000 a year. So how many times would you invest $4 to get 65 grand? I'm sure quite a few of you. Another separator um, that you can put in there, one, a differentiator, is can you put the words, the only, in front of your company? So for my cleaning company, I am the only non-toxic and green carpet cleaning company on the Eastern Shore. Could you be the only profit first accountant in Boise. Second best to that, if you happen to not be the only, is being the first, okay? So we were the first to offer non-toxic and green cleaning. But you wanna come up with questions that only you can say yes to, all right? So create a list of questions that only you can answer yes to, put it on a document, and it's almost like daring your client to go find a better price. And a quick note about quality and expectations. Quality is an entry level factor, okay? If you're not providing an, a, a quality product or service right now, this whole concept is screwed for you. you just go back to charging you know, $9 a room, et cetera. Your guests or your clients are looking for the whole experience, okay? You gotta change the weight of that importance that you give to your total client experience. Exceed expectations. Do you actually know what they are? It's hard to exceed their expectations if you don't know. You hear all the time companies claim, we strive to exceed customer expectations. They don't have the remotest idea how incredibly high 
those customer customers expectations are it ain't easy okay you got to remember that they are not yours for life no business today automatically has customers for life which is a big thing you know it's a big change from the way things used to be you know people used to oh yeah i'll stick with biff's automotive for the rest of my life no you actually have to be active in putting a chain fence, a titanium cage around your clients and not allowing them to escape. And whether you like it or not, they compare you to everybody. Your service is getting compared to a, a McDonald's Big Mac. Uh, you're going to get compared to the teeth cleaning at your dentist, etc. Everybody gets compared. And one of the things though, as I mentioned about pricing is it's all up in your head, okay? It's not in your customer's head. It's called stinking thinking as Zig Ziglar called it, all right? You've got to get past it. Trust me, just try that 10% price increase. You'll see how it works. So let's talk to you about this price increase and 10%. And I'm going to show you mathematically how you can do that, lose 10% of your clients and still make more money. Wouldn't that be cool? Type in the Q&A. Yeah, Vance, show me how to do that. If you guys are still awake out there. Somebody make me happy. Quick, get to the chat. Not the chat, the Q&A. Sorry, chat's disabled. Yeah, Vance, show me how. All right. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to show you how. I'm not even going to take it a couple steps further. So let's just say for sake of argument, the price of your good or your product is a hundred bucks. And let's sell, say you sell 75 of them. So that gives you $7,500. It costs you uh, $7.50 to make, or excuse me, $750 to make those products. So after you subtract out your cost of goods, you got 6,750 bucks left over. Now let's just add 10% to the price. So now you're selling it for $110, but you lost 10% of your clients, which brings you down to 68 sales. So if you multiply 68 by 110, you get 7,480, which is pretty darn close to what you had before, but your cost of goods went down because you had to make less or serve less. Your profit is actually higher than if you hadn't raised your price and lost those clients. Trust me, that 10% of clients that you lost are your pain in the ass clients. They cost you more. They cost you more to keep on the books through reservices, complaints, always changing their schedules. These are the worst ones. Raise your prices 10%, you get rid of the worst 10% of your clients. Now let's take this a step further. Let's triple your prices. Okay, so we're going to go from 100 bucks to 300 bucks. And let's lose 75% or yeah, 75% or 65% of your clients. So you're only going to sell 25. You're going to sell 25 at $300 gives you that same $7,500. But it only costs you 250 bucks to make, giving you a higher profitability. Do you see how that works? 300 bucks for the price. You lost two thirds of your clients, gives you the same sales, cost you less. Now, also, if you're delivering a service, it's not just think outside the box with me, folks. Okay. This is less wear and tear on vehicles. This is less wear and tear on employees. This is less solutions. This is less mileage and everything. So your cost of goods might be different for the sake and ease of math. This is the one I decided to show. So it's in your head. You got to break that price product link. Every major business that is successfully financially has done that. Starbucks, coffee. You got a $9 coffee when you can go to Wawa or Royal Farms or a gas station and get it for a buck. Advil. You can get the generic stuff for $2.99 for $500. And you, Advil is going to charge you 15 bucks for 12 of them. Bentley. A car is a car is a car. It's got four wheels, an engine, and a body. Pintos have four wheels, an engine, and a body. So do Bentleys. So there, you got to get that price elasticity into your head. You got to change the language. 
Customers are not what you want. You want clients. You may not go out and you don't want to go out and do an estimate. You don't want to go out and do a quote. You want to go out and do a survey. And you want to manage your experience and manage your clients. They don't like to be watched. Do something no one else in your field is doing. One of the documents that I use is the carpet survey questionnaire. None of my competitors are using this. We go through the entire life history of the carpet for that particular uh, client, right? We do it for new clients. We don't do it for everybody, but it's two pages. And we ask them, what's going on in your home? Do you have pets? Do you have kids? How old is the carpet? Et cetera. Nobody, my competitors know I'm doing it. They won't do it. I also have three books, three, count them, three books for the carpet business. How to Preserve the Value of Your Oriental Rugs, The Pet Owner's Guide to Carpet Cleaning, and The Eastern Shore's Only Guide to Healthy Indoor Living. So yes, a carpet cleaner can have books. Pricing and packages. I told you about that earlier. How can you bundle things together and increase your prices? I have the highest prices by about 32% than my closest competitor here in my area. And then how about just standing behind your quality? This is further differentiation. I actually have a quality assurance checklist that the technician and the customer has to sign at the end of the job. Even more, people always ask, well, how often should I clean my carpet? Well, I'm going to tell you. Depends on how much you use it. And here's a, you know, if you use it a little bit, you should do it every year. If you use it, you know, if you've got a herd of elephants and six kids, you should probably be cleaning it every two or three months. Code of, uh, code of ethics, great thing to have. So are you merely just trying to imitate your closest competitor and improving your business, you know, inch by painful inch? There is a danger here. It's that whole marketing incest that I've been talking about. Most businesses, when they're creating a service and a marketing plan, they merely look to others in their industry and they kind of have this illusion of being successful and then they copy them. Maybe little swight tweaks, tweaks and improvements, okay? It's incestuous, it's bad behavior, and it's gonna to lead to a life of mediocrity and low bank accounts, okay? So you don't want this. You don't want this at all. So how do you create this experience powerhouse that's gonna generate the income that you deserve and you don't have to work harder? This, I mean, you put this stuff together, you put it out and you manage the system. You don't actually have to like do stuff once you have one of these items, all right? This stuff makes you money. So how do we do this? Well, I've packaged up my service and marketing and magical experiences just for you, okay? At this event in November, you're going to get everything I learned from my 10 years as a manager and trainer at Disney, 25 more years in hospitality. Of course, I was fired twice, but don't take that for bad. And 15 years as a small business owner. This is going to be some of the exact same training that I do when I go to Disney World. It's a groundbreaking system. It's an overall system for operating the business. And it's designed exclusively for professional services. And it's gonna provide you with the advanced marketing and client service strategies you need. Why is it groundbreaking? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. This is the first service and marketing blueprint program designed exclusively for service professionals. It was designed and tested by a small service business owner, me, and other businesses that I've shown it to have all profited from it. You're going to get strategies proven to increase the profitability of your business, and I'm going to personally guarantee that you make at least 10 times your investment if you implement the strategies that I talk about. So who's this for? Well, this is for people who want to create an environment where the outside world melts away and, the, and that price elasticity is there. You want to have engaged employees, ones that actively deliver consistent, superior, best-in-class service. You're going to have more efficient and profitable processes. You're going to become recognized as the expert in your field. Wouldn't that be great? little bit of, you know, patting yourself on the back, walking through the grocery store, head held high because you are the expert in your field. It's what you set you apart from the competition. 
And I'm going to give you the blueprint for creating these service standards that consistently deliver profitability and experiences. All right. Probably not asking yourself this because if you're here, this is not a question, but this is who it's not for. And it's probably the best question I get. I only work with people who are ready to take massive action. I only work with real businesses. So if you're selling get rich quick schemes or other black hat tricks, I am not for you. I don't have any mamby pamby slick little quotes like some of these other marketing gurus. I'm not a social worker. I don't like working with, working with whiners, complainers, or doubters. You got to be ready to think about how to do business from your client's point of view. Look, I can't get you to quit smoking, lose weight, or exercise, though you should consider all of those. There are a lot of marketing gurus out there schlepping overpriced, untested programs designed to kind of get rich quick. I, I mean, I saw ads yesterday in my Facebook feed about get 50 clients right now. Sorry, BS. Okay. Most of these guys have never worked in a real bricks and mortar business. Can you believe that? They're offering marketing and service systems without ever testing them to see that they work. Well, look, I've tested, used, and proved successful all the strategies that I share. And I even share the ones that completely flopped. Why do I do that? Because you know what? It might work for you. And also let you know that, well, hey, you know, I ain't perfect. I got stuff that flops too. But the stuff I share with you, you will know if it works. Actually, I had a client, uh, she's actually all the way from Australia, uh, Leticia, um, who um, was very nice to say this. Actually, she just wrote this to me last week. Uh, said, I've consumed a lot of marketing in my time, um, and yours is hands down the best. No BS, simple, direct, and it works. Oh, thank you, Leticia. I certainly appreciate that. Why you should not delay. The longer you wait to create an experience out of your service or product, the longer you're going to be frustrated. And what's worse? What if your competitor is reading on this training right now? You're going to be madder than the Mad Hatter as his business skyrockets, and he takes your hard-earned clients or patients. Look, I've been there. I've lost money on get-rich marketing schemes, and I've had really crappy employees. But today, thanks to creating those experiences for my clients and my employees, based on my Disney knowledge and the secrets of their operations, I have a business that runs on autopilot, generates profit far above the industry, and have clients that stay, pay, and refer. Uh, my, one of my members, Ben Settle, some of you might be uh, familiar with him, um, is, he mentioned that I am uh, the far, the single best resource for learning how to merge customer service with direct response marketing to exponentially ratchet up sales that he's ever heard. Jeez. So if you want to have less stress, make more money, more free time, more time with friends and family, and freedom and autonomy, this is for you. And by the way, my definition of autonomy and my definition of freedom is to come and go as I please in any of my businesses, and they will still hum along and kick out money into my wallet. That's beauty. That's my definition. You will probably have your own. So what's going to happen on these three days up in Baltimore? You know what? By the way, just one of these ideas put to good use could dramatically positively impact your business and your bank account. So on Wednesday, so like I said, this is November 2nd through the 4th. On Wednesday, uh, I'm going to start off with a state of the small business economy. And we'll talk about the uh, shit storm um, that's going around, but how we can not only survive, but thrive it. I'm going to go through my revolutionary client attraction system, how to stop cold prospecting forever, how to use a simple postcard or a simple sales letter or email to create a flood of new clients, how to create irresistible offers that attract past and new clients, okay? We're not chasing people. People hate to be chased. You want to attract the clients you want to do business with, just like a porch light attracts a swarm of bugs. I'm going to show you a number of different, what I call cash flow surges. These are strategies that if you implement them right now, by tomorrow morning, you'll have cash in the bank. It's not mamby pamby. It's not something weird or black hat. I've actually done this with some of my members um, in the Disney program. And these are real hardcore um, 
strategies. Um, I make marketing simple. I mean, as Letitia said, usually each one of my systems is like three steps. Anybody can do it. Um, how to stop being an advertising victim. Stop wasting money on advertising you cannot hold accountable. All right. Don't listen to the salespeople, people that are selling you media, radio stations, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. They're just trying to sell you the next ad. And then you're going to get a system. And it's not going to be this hit or miss advertising, a system for attracting those clients. So by the end of Wednesday, you're going to have a blueprint for your marketing system, a cash flow surge campaign, your irresistible offer, headlines for social media that work, and how to replicate on demand your ideal client. Thursday, oh baby, Thursday is going to be a long day. We're going to do the seven magic keys to disney your business. This is where we're going to create the whole experience for your clients, okay? You're going to get your own personal operating system for wowing clients, okay? That's the first magic key, which in turn is going to generate free publicity and referrals. Remember that little gift I showed you? That's part of the wow. How to create experiences out of the mundane. We're going to go over details. All of us are in a detail-oriented business, all right? This is an effortless Disney system that consistently generates five-star reviews and free marketing on autopilot. We're going to cover employees. Not a lot, but I'm going to give you some secret documents from my time at Disney uh, that are not available to the public. Uh, for training and onboarding new employees. I'm also going to show you how to recruit your ideal employee, and then once you've got them, how to keep them. We're going to create your service standards, how to outperform your competitors at least three to one with your personal service team, okay? We're going to talk about your environment. Remember that whole sell in a competitive, uh, non-competitive environment? You want to sell in that bubble. And a lot of us have to go nose to nose, toes to toes with people that are uh, in their living room or in their kitchen. That's, exact, that's actually a hostile selling environment because they're not on your home turf. So you want to be able to create that environment. And then lastly, um, you're going to increase your sales and profits with magic key number seven, which is my time-tested formula, QEE plus QCE plus QBP times DRM equals PF, which real quickly is quality employee experience plus a quality client experience plus quality business practices equals uh, times marketing equals a profitable future. So by the end of Thursday, you're going to have those clients that stay, pay, and refer. You're going to be moved from a commodity to an experience. You're going to have elastic prices, just like Disney. You're going to have engaged employees that I'll show you how to get them. It's a tough market right now. I get it, but I'm going to show you how to get them. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how to keep them unless they just suck, which you shouldn't have hired them to begin with. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to systematize experiences that don't require you to be there all the time. Let the stuff run on autopilot. Friday is all going to be about client retention. In the morning, we're going to go through my reminder strategy, show you how to build that titanium fence around your herd. You're going to get two more cash flow surges. And then I'm going to go over the number one marketing sin and how to avoid it. And then finally, Friday afternoon, I'm going to show you GSD. Get shit done. Way more than just time management. Okay. We're going to go through a document and an exercise called the found money blueprint. We're going to identify areas in your business where you are going to find money and realize how to package it and how to bundle it with other services. We're going to get you into your productivity groove and how to stay in it and control your time, control your business, not the other way around. So a three-day ticket, um, it, list price is $1,099. Uh, um, I've got a grant from the Entrepreneurial Society of the Americas. Uh, right now, they're still offering a $1,000 grant um, to anybody who signs up for the three-day ticket which brings it down to $9.99. But you know, because you're here today, um, it's not going to be $9.99. All right. If you enter the promo code GC300, okay, GC300, it's going to bring the price down to $6.99. Okay. Or you can do a 3x pay of $2.69.
So here's the simple directions. Go to www.dboss2022live, select the ticket you want, fill out the form, and enter the code. Ah, oh, but wait, there's more. This is probably the best, most powerful guarantee I've ever offered. I know what it's like to feel uncertain about a big investment in yourself and in your business. I felt the same way when I invested in my first coaching program. That little voice inside your head that says, is this shit really gonna work? Well, the one thing you're gonna love about this event, besides the incredible value, everything you're gonna learn, all the entrepreneurs and people that you're going to run into is my guarantee. I'm so confident that you're going to get 10 times the value of your investment that I will give you all of your money back, even if you stay for a day and a half or two days. I'm gonna give you all your money back. And on top of that, I'm gonna reimburse you for your travel. How's that sound, huh? Reimburse you for your travel. I kind of like that. That's how much I believe in this, okay? If at any time during the conference, you feel like you made a mistake, aren't receiving the value or just disappointed, you can simply hand in your materials at the back table and let us know. You'll get a full and complete refund and your ticket home will be paid for, your whole round trip ticket. Oh, but wait, there's more. I've put together an export, expert resource panel um, and I've uh, already completed uh, the expert uh, resource videos with uh, Mike Delon, who is a, uh, uh, a great strategist as far as credibility. Um, and so these are some of the guys um, that I trust, that I do business with, okay? They are experts in their fields. I am the only speaker at this event. There will be no selling from stage from the expert resource panel. Sure, if you want to talk to them about buying their stuff, feel free. That's what they're there for. If you like their solution, certainly by all means, get it. But we have Jack Turk, who is the world's fastest copywriter, is going to be talking about how to write headlines, how to write subject lines and emails and things that will get sales. Brian Durkin is going to be there. Oh, this guy's great. He shows you how to use VAs at very, very low cost to do all of the minutia manual stuff in your marketing systems that you just don't wanna do. And we'll have, uh, let's see, Justin Miller's gonna be there. Um, he's gonna show you how to use direct mail um, and lumpy mail and things like that. We're gonna have our web design, uh, Google AdWords specialist there. And I'm not gonna just let them run willy nilly on the stage. I'm actually going to do pointed interviews with them one, so that they stay on topic, and two, so that you get the most out of these guys. And remember, they are not going to pitch you. I promise, 100%. So go to dboss2022live.com, select your ticket, fill out the form, enter GC300 to save your ticket price. Oh, and by the way, there's some people are coming for free. The people that are in my top level mastermind group, the Alliance, I know there's a couple of you on this call, and actually a couple of you have already signed up, but make sure you call me and get your free ticket, okay? Sorry, everybody else, you got to pay. But my Alliance guys, because they're in my top level mastermind, uh, they get their ticket um, for free. And I would tell that to anybody. Um, so I've covered a lot of stuff here. Um, is there anything um, that um, uh, you have questions about that I went over? Uh, throw them in the Q&A portion. I'll be more than happy to cover them. Wow, I must have been comprehensive. Really comprehensive. Either that or you guys are slow typers. All right, this really can work. All right, a carpet cleaner do it. We are on the bottom, bottom, bottom of the home service totem pole, okay? You know, plumbers and electricians are up here, water treatment, uh, pest control, and then carpet cleaners are all the way down at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's um, where we are. If I can do it, you guys can do it. 
All right, since there are no questions, I thank you all for being here. Um, if you missed any of it, um, I will get a replay up um, at some time. Um, no, David, power washing is not lower. Trust me, uh, you could get this done. Oh my God, power wash. You would be the king of power washers. This is just amazing. Um, but at any rate, so I don't, I don't wanna go off on power washers, but power washers, huge, huge opportunity for breaking out of commodities because anybody can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, buy a pressure washer, throw it in the back of their pickup truck and call them a business owner. Um, that's a commodity. Um, so uh, fantastic. And then Shelly, uh, oh, Shelly, thank you very much for the com uh, comments. Um, told a client, um, <laughs> she had told a cheapy, cheapy client, no, um, that I would not take a competitor's coupon. Good for you, thumbs up. I hate those ads. We accept competitors' coupons. It's the dumbest freaking thing you could ever do. I mean, unless you're bottom scroungers. Um, all right, so uh, that is the end. I thank you all for your time here with me. I certainly appreciate it. I know your time is valuable. I hope you got something out of this. And head over on to DBOSS 2022 Live and uh, get yourself a ticket to the event um, November 2nd to the 4th. Thanks so much, everybody. We will talk to you later.